A few weeks ago, the FT ran a story on Carl Icahn, one of Wall Street's legendary billionaire investors who's been positioning his portfolio in expectation of a big stock market crash. The only problem is that he's been holding this position since 2017, and over the last six years, as the stock market has climbed higher and higher, this position has ended up losing him $9 billion. That is a lot of money, even for him. And in an interview with the FT, he said, I've always told people, there is nobody who can really pick the market on a short or intermediate term basis. And maybe I made the mistake of not adhering to my own advice in recent years. When all of the headlines you read in the press and the videos you watch on YouTube paint such a grim picture of the future, it leaves you thinking that surely the stock market has to fall from where it is now. So why don't I wait and hold on to my cash and then invest once it does? This sounds like an intelligent thing to do, and you would be right it is highly likely that the stock market will fall below where it is today. But I wanna show you some data that proves why betting on a stock market crash is pointless and why there is only one thing you should be doing with your money right now. Hello and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is James. I am a financial planner and this is a place where you can learn to become a better investor. Peter Lynch is without doubt one of the greatest investors of all time. He used to run Fidelity's legendary Magellan Fund and achieved an astounding 29% annualized return for 13 years. He's also gone on to write several books that have become canon for both aspiring and professional investors. And this is one of his most famous quotes. Far more money has been lost by investors trying to anticipate stock market corrections than has been lost in all the corrections combined. One of the worst mistakes that you can make is switching in and out of stocks or funds hoping to avoid an upcoming correction. Making changes to your investment portfolio or holding onto cash to try and dodge a stock market crash or a correction is known as trying to time the market. And you've probably heard that this is something that you should not try to do. But so had Carl Icahn. He even said that this is something that he preaches, and yet he didn't follow his own advice. Why? Well, it's the same reason why almost all investing mistakes are made. It's when greed and fear overpowers logic and reason. So I want to cut through all of this emotion and all this noise created by this sensationalized negative content that you've been consuming and show you the data that proves just how pointless trying to time the market really is. The data I'm about to show you is taken from Nick Majuli's amazing blog of dollars and data, and I would highly encourage you to check it out. So I've left a link to it down in the description. Market timing behavior is based on the premise that if the stock market is likely to fall in the future, then I will be better holding onto my cash now and then investing once the market has fallen. And yes, the chances are that the stock market is likely to fall below where it is today. In fact, if you were to pick a random trading day for the US Dow Jones index between 1970 and 2019, there is a 95% chance that the market would have gone on to fall lower at some time in the future. This means that in only one of every 20 trading days did the market keep moving on upwards, never to return back to that price. This graph visualizes what that looks like. The black line shows the historical performance of the Dow Jones index over the last 50 years. And the red line moves up every time a new market high is reached that the market never drops below again in the future. It's like a low watermark and represents the best possible times you could have invested. As an example, between 1990 and 1997, lots of new all-time market highs were set. And now, looking back with perfect hindsight, we can see that the market never dropped below these prices again, meaning that this was not a good time to try and time the market because you would have ended up sat on the sidelines as the market shot higher, never to return to those prices. Whereas on April 15th, 1997, the market reached a new all-time high of 6,457, and it went on to set new all-time highs over the following years. But on the 9th of March, 2009, during the great financial crisis, the index dropped back down to this point. Meaning that during this 12 year period, you would have been better off keeping your money as cash and then investing once the market dropped. Of course, that is a pretty pointless observation because to have made that call correctly, you would have needed godlike powers of foresight to know exactly what is going to happen in the future. But what if you did know what the markets were going to do in advance and you managed to time the market perfectly, getting the best possible price 
every time you invest. How much better off do you think you'd be? Well, this is what Nick tested. He started with a control strategy of dollar cost averaging. So systematically investing $1 every day for the full 49 year period, no matter what is going on in the markets. So in total with this strategy, you would have invested 12,623 pounds. And by the end of this period, this strategy would have left you with 168,000 pounds, which is not bad, but with the second strategy, he assumed we have godlike foresight and know exactly what is going to happen in the future, allowing us to execute a perfect buy the dip strategy. So instead of investing $1 every day, this strategy saves up $1 of cash each day and only invests it when we know that we won't be able to achieve a better price in the future. So between 1997 and 2009, instead of investing $1 a day, this strategy saved $1 of cash each day and invested all of it right as the market bottomed on the 9th of March, 2009. This strategy times the market perfectly and only invests cash at the best possible price. So after 50 years of getting every call right, how much better off do you think this strategy would have left you than if you just blindly invested $1 a day? Just 22% or 0.4% per year. This is a strategy that literally knows the future and times the market perfectly for 50 years and it's only 22% better off at the end. I would have expected it to be way better than that, but it's not, it's pathetic. And this shows how little a difference even perfect market timing makes. Of course, if you actually try to execute this in the real world, where you don't know what is going to happen in the future, think about the time you would have to dedicate to this, the stress you would need to endure, and the mental discipline that it would require. And I can tell you right now that if you are thinking of trying to time the market, it's either because you're greedy or you're fearful which tells me that you don't have the emotional or mental discipline to get anywhere near this result. In fact, it's much more likely that you will find yourself sat there like Carl Icahn, watching as the market keeps doing what it does, marching higher and higher until you eventually capitulate and buy in at a higher price. And to quote Peter Lynch again, it's a mistake to sit on your cash and wait for a stock market correction. In trying to time the market to sidestep the bears, people often miss out on their chance to run with the bulls. So what should you take away from this? Well, yes, we will see stock market crashes in the future, and it's highly likely that the market will fall below where it is today. But over the long run, it really does not matter. So save yourself the stress and set up a direct debit so that you automatically invest your money each month, no matter what is happening in the markets. And instead, focus your energies on activities where you have more control of the outcome and higher probabilities of success, like learning new skills and increasing your income. Now, you might be sat there thinking, well, this is all good and well if you've got time on your side, but what if I'm about to retire or have already retired? Well, if that's the case, you need to watch this video here where I show you the strategies that you can employ to protect yourself from a stock market crash in retirement. I'll see you there.